Hey, hey. What are you doing? Oh. Working. Uh -huh. um, what about the mask? Or are they coming along? Who's working on it anyway? She is. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, I apologize for this. I tried to come up with a reason as to why Nedi maps are hard to use sometimes. But I think it's better to just show you how it works. Usually you draw maps with connections. Therefore the links table is one of the most important tables to reveal the topology because it sort of points to itself to show how the network is laid out. You need additional information from the devices table to draw the icons and stacks and all that. If you wish to display interface related information, it will be derived from the interfaces table. If you are to draw maps with a background image, you need the locations table to find the coordinates of those locations. Now I want to show you how to start drawing maps. Over time I've been adding easier ways to get started with any kind of map you want to do. So for one example, if you go to a device, we have some miniature maps here, which refer to the connected nodes, to a device's neighbors, or to the group the device belongs to. The group can be a VTP group, if it's a Cisco device, or any mapped group you define based on a device's IP address. If you click on this one, for example, you get a simple map with the neighbor of this device. The definition is up here, where it says device equals edge and range equals one. With those fingers, you can increase the range. Let me make this a little bit smaller so you can see more. And as I increase the range, you see more and more devices are being added to this map. Another way to get started with a regional map, if you have SNMP location strings formatted according to the NETI scheme, you can simply switch to internal maps. And then if you drill down, you will see a preview of the map you're going to get. And you can click on this icon to get to the actual map. Yet another way is to leverage the group directly in the group report and create a map of this group. Now let's see how you're actually going to edit those maps. On the left hand side you see the filter section which pretty much works like those in the list modules. You can add up to four of them and narrow down your search. You can simply click this icon to reduce what you see to only SNMP devices, which means it will add automatically an SNMP version greater than zero. Um, of course, this only works if you have no more than three filter defined, because otherwise you'll run out of filters. In the middle section or the main section, you define the title, the size of the image, the format, and now you can choose between true color PNG files or less deep files, meaning you have smaller files, which can be an advantage if you want to display them on monitoring maps, for example, because they will load faster. There is an SVG map, which means you can also draw vector maps, just like that, and you can see this is all SVG. Another feature is D3JS, which lets you draw interactive maps. And just for the fun of it, let's select shape small to see some more stuff in here. D3JS is very interesting as it lets you explore the topology. You can drag the whole map just like that. You can drag a single device and it will stick to where you let go. You can double click it and it will move back again. So it's free floating again. Let me try to drag a whole section. 
zoom in with the mouse wheel. If you hover over a device, you see the link now, or the links here, will be shown to make it easier to follow the topology. I'm back at drawing PNG maps to show you the different map types Nedi can draw. I've also enabled dynamic edit with that the page reloads whenever I change a field here and redraws the map. I can drill down to cities, buildings, and as you can see now I'm drawing 1400 some devices and each building contains more or less one device. I can change this to tiny shapes to make it look a bit more reasonable. It looks like Nedi is drawing circles with all those buildings around the cities, more or less, as this topology obviously spreads out a lot more. And I'm going to explain to you now why that is. The calculations are performed in polar coordinates and every item is drawn on a circle with respect to their neighbors. For flat maps, this means you get one circle. The more links an item had, the closer it would be drawn to the center. In more recent versions, the items are arranged in a tree structure, setting those with the most links as root, also close to the center. Now here we have an example of three regions, and then you have several cities per region. And now you can see that all those regions are drawn on a circle. The same applies for the cities within a region. And if you had buildings as well, they will be drawn on circles around the cities. If you enter topology maps via menu, you get to see the last map, if there is any. And if you just click show, you get a map matching all your devices on a regional level and the map is being drawn in building mode. The link length is defined by this value here. I can increase it or I can lower it. The regions move closer together accordingly. Now I have to California and Switzerland as a region. If I go down to city level, I notice that Kloten and Zurich are way too far apart in relation to California or Roseville. And that's what this value here is for. It's the length per level setting. If I increase it to 8, the Swiss region gets smaller. I can even display the region information. So you see those two belong to the Swiss region. That's the California region. Because it's only one city here, we have a smaller indicator up here. So let me move this further apart again and increase that level and maybe it makes sense to rotate the cities by 90 degrees and make the whole thing a bit smaller again so we get to see more. Now you can see that I could optimize this map with a few mouse clicks. Thing is, rotating cities is a bit tricky. If you have other regions with several cities, they will rotate as well. So you need to find the value that works the best for all of them. Now I can go one level deeper to the buildings. And it pretty much stays the same because I only have one building per city. If I go one level deeper, I get to see inside those buildings. Now the difference between building mode and ring mode is that buildings are drawn as circles in ring mode as well. You can see here that zoo building persists of three devices arranged in a circle. Similar here and here. I admit though that this building particularly doesn't look very nice. So let me show you a way how to edit buildings for documentation. I'm going to topology table in map mode and select the building I'm interested in. To adjust buildings, you can use those two values here 
to either set how many columns the building should have. As we have three now, I could go down to two so you see what's happening. But let me put it back to eight, the default. Also, you could space out the devices even more or less, depending on your needs, to make the building bigger or smaller. Now I might just be interested in SNMP devices and I can click here, as we've learned, to remove the phones. Now I still might want to have an alternative view than the building view. Now we could select ring mode, which draws the building again as a circle. We could, if you only had one building, use flat mode instead. But now we see it looks quite off. This is because of this range field here. If you set it to zero, we get that circle thingy again. Now I can make this positive, which works in most cases. Obviously not in this one because we have redundant links. It's a bit trickier. In that case, you could use negative values, which make it look a bit better. However, it's probably not exactly what I wanted. So if I use layer map instead, we enter a whole new mode how Nedi maps can work. In layer maps, the filters don't work the same way as they did before. Here, you can assign each filter to a layer you define up in that text box where it says core distribution access by default. You could also assign it to inside and outside, for example, for DMCs. Now let's set the first filter to match a core device. Now I'm going to enter a filter for my distribution device. It's simple here because the device name says what it does. Let's add a third one for the access. Now, this looks a bit weird because we have a link length of 100. The link length here defines the vertical spacing of those layers. So if I make it smaller, it gets a lot more condensed. Let me go back to 100. And the spacing in the horizontal axis is done by this column here. So let's space out the whole thing a bit more. Now those two are much more spaced out than those three down here. That's because of this length per level factor, which is five now, meaning it's five times smaller on this layer than it is on this layer. And then again, it's five times smaller than it is on this layer. So if I just go down to two, it looks much better. I might even go down to one have a typical core distribution access, whereas, okay, this distribution layer doesn't even have any access and the access is directly connected to the core. But except from that, it pretty much looks like a regular layer map. I could change the icons to the actual panels, which makes it easier for documentation. I'm adding IP addresses and maybe want to see the interfaces as well. And also I might just use a smaller format for this now. Let me space the verticals out a little bit more. And now I have what you could call a simple documentation generated within a few minutes. I pulled up the map showing that group 71 again to show you what you could do if the map expands beyond the canvas as it happens here. You can move the center of the map minus 20 on the X axis and perhaps plus 20 on the Y axis. Another option to tweak this map could be this node range value here. If I set it to one, you can see that now that the map is in a tree structure, that we have several circles showing the devices 
based on their position or on their distance to the center device. If I make it larger, they eventually spread out. And in this case, further than some of the other nodes, resulting in crossing lines. You probably don't want to have that. So it's a good thing to keep those values smaller. OK, so now when you're happy with your map, you could use it in a report, for example. That's what those icons are for. They're only active if you have created a new map. I can click this to add the first filter and the map you see to device reports. I get group 71. I can add type distribution because we don't have any reports down here yet. Click show. And now I have a nice type distribution report with the previously generated map on the top. I can easily go to print view and create a PDF from the whole thing. The last map type I want to show you is the background map. In order to use that one, you need first to go to the location editor and place your locations on a background image. I've done this for the regions here on a global map. But in order to get more details in a region, you could use system files, select a region you want to upload your background image into, and select the file, which should be called background JPEG, and upload it accordingly. If you go back to the location editor now, access this region and select the city, you can see it's been placed on that map. You do this by simply clicking on the location. Once you're done, you click update or add if the location doesn't exist. When you're done, you can go and create a map of that region and select background map and the region will be drawn accordingly. From here, you can customize it, showing link load and perhaps the monitoring status. This brings me to the next use case for Nedi Maps. I will go back to my own network by selecting the main database. And if I go back to topology map, I'm actually drawing my real network now. I might even use background map as I have defined my locations before as well. To make it more interesting, I can draw the cities now. And as you can see here, Zurich and Kloten, they're really close actually, but they spread out over the whole map here. That's because this length here, which can be made smaller. Now, the icons are quite out of proportion, but usually if you draw a map and use it in Neri, you might want to have something else anyways. So for example, let's draw the latency of those locations instead. And maybe for the links, I would like to have the link load, which is pretty much zero here. But I could use this map now and add it to the monitoring module. I have one here already, which I've created earlier. But I can move to the next screen, even the next one over, showing the map I've just created. You can arrange the maps you want to see in the monitoring dashboard by entering this editor. And now you see what we've just seen, a geographical map using OpenStreetMaps, but also the previously created map and the one I just did now. You can edit or copy the maps from here. So if I click copy, the button here says monitor again. I could change this to 
status. And instead of link load, I want to see the link status, which is a new feature of Netty 1.7. It shows the interface status on the links to let you know which ones are down or partially up if several interfaces are used on a particular link. Now we can add this to monitoring again. If I go back to monitoring map, edit mode, I have two maps now. One displaying latency and link load, the other one displaying the device status and the link status. If I click edit this map, the button is update instead of monitor, meaning it will update the existing map I've created in monitoring map rather than adding a new one. If you have information displayed on links, so let's say bandwidth. Now this guy here is covered by the icons. You can adjust this information location field. With that, the information displayed here will move outwards from the center of the map, which seems to be okay here, but in this case, it's quite far off. This can still be useful if you were to draw traffic graphs, which then won't cover up the rest of your map. Let's add interface names. Now they're pretty cramped over here. You could increase this space again. You can move this interface label on the actual link. Now, if I enable this guy here, so you can see how the labels wander about on those links. We could also have status tiny on device level, decrease the floor spacing of those buildings but maybe without the interface labels now. We see inside the buildings on a global map. Let's update that. And behold, the monitoring screen showing those maps one after another. Another interesting feature in Netty 1.7 will be the track button here. So if you have a map where, let's say, you add traffic graphs as well. If you click track, the page will reload every five minutes, creating a new map. Once you hit end, it will render a movie, helping you to find intermittent problems or do some long-term tracking of your network. Hope you liked this tutorial. Thanks for watching. That was rather boring. <laughs>